with that, I am going to go to the next, uh, our next aspect of the uh, session, and I'm going to introduce our guest speaker, Rita um, Shani. Um, so just give you a quick introduction. Rita has a bachelor's degree of law degree and a master's in business administration. She's also a certified Franklin um, Kirby trainer for several leadership and productivity courses, including the seven habits of um, effective people. Um, Rita is a development consultant with more than 15 years of international experience. Uh, before she started her own company, Rita worked for uh, Deloitte, South Africa, Deloitte, Zambia, and Pricewater, uh, Pricewater Coopers and Namibia as a senior manager of the International Development Assistance Line. Her work experience, with, her work experience mostly comprised of provision of consultancy services of different types in the public and the private sectors for NGOs and uh, governments. Um, more importantly for this group is that Rita, Rita is the country leader of Girls for Girls for South Africa. Her dedication and authenticity is an inspiration to everybody, and you'll hear this when she does her presentation. At a personal level, she has invested time in working with young women to develop their leadership capacity. She does this through Girls for Girls, which was started um, last year with uh, UJ, and with more than 40 young women at the University of Joburg. Um, in 2020, Girls for Girls has rolled out in seven communities, in high schools, in universities, and is expecting to reach 300 girls. And it keeps on rolling out even through lockdown. We found ways with, uh, through Rita's leadership, we've strategized. And with that, I'm not going to over talk. I'm just going to let her wow you with her presentation. So over to you, Rita. Thank you. Thank you, Gladys. I, I, I'm sitting here just listening and I'm like, yeah, I think there's a shorter story around here, but thank you very much for the <laughs> introduction. Um, what can I say? It's a tough one huh? because like, I, I feel like I know this cohort. I've been listening to Val, I've been listening to Asnat, and of course I've been reading the reports that are, are generated out of the three sessions. Um, I'm extremely excited to be here. Um, I think to the girls, um, we're so proud of you. Uh, the, the lockdown has not been easy for a lot of us but the tenacity that has been shown in this group, um, the fact that you guys can say in one week, you're going to wrap this thing up and do sessions four, five, and six. Uh, I take my hat off to the mentors, but I think I take it off even more um, for the mentees. So thank you very much. I think we're extremely proud of, um, we're extremely proud of your cohort. I keep hearing how smart you are and I've already started experiencing it. So um, my journey, rather my, my task today is to talk to you about ethics and values in decision making. So some people like to just talk about ethics and values, but like Gladys has very well spoken out and, and, and articulated, um, it's how do you apply? How do you bring this, this, this method, this thought process of applying ethics and values when you're making important decisions? And, and these are things that are going to be important for you as leaders. For me, I mean, if I was here in the beginning, I would have told you, and, and I pr I'm sure someone said it to you that, what Girls for Girls is all about is about empowering girls to lead. Um, by the time we get to session six, especially this particular group, uh, we understand that we have allowed the leaders to emerge. So this session on ethics and values in decision making is it's like the proverbial cherry on the cake. It's the last thing you need to know. Some people ask why it comes at the end. I mean, why didn't we address it in the beginning? But it's also because this is one of the areas where leaders make their biggest mistakes. If you stop just for a moment and you think about what is going wrong in our society, in our country, um, and you reflect, you will see that there were issues related to um, ethics and, um, and, and values um, when decision making was being done. So um, this is a final insight. This is a final big lesson for you to carry forward um, in your journey as leaders, whether at a personal level, as well as at a, like uh, um, Gladys was saying, maybe at an organizational level, but also at a societal level, because that is where we expect you to, um, to be, the spaces we expect you to be entering. We don't think you're going to be leaders and sitting in a small space. We expect you to step up into the big leadership space, which is the societal and the public office um, space. So Gladys has talked about um, what, what, what the key components of um, ethics and values are. 
Um, but it, it's, and, and I want to unpack the concept of, um, of moral dilemmas. M moral dilemmas, I, I think if we talk about it from an emotional perspective, it's those things that tear you apart. Um, I, listening to the, 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 the skit that was played earlier on, I actually think that it's Sharon that had the bigger moral dilemma. I'll tell you why. It's because her friend came to her, her friend who she likes, yeah, they kept on saying it, um, and who she would not want to report, comes to her with some very wrong information. So that's the one tug. Um, she cares for her friend. But the other side, the other side that's tugging her is that little thing in the head that is saying, no, Sharon, this is wrong. We need to report it. That is a moral dilemma. When you feel that you're being torn about, um, torn into two about something, and it's very important we understand it. There's a difference between a moral dilemma and just making a bad decision. Um, think about, we all know the guy who does the insurance ad, and I'm sure all of you have seen the horrible stories that are going around. That's just a bad decision. You know, he, 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 he cheated on his wife. Um, it was not a moral dilemma. He just made a bad decision. But think about, for example, the politicians, and we know them, I won't name names, who take a package or a contribution from a criminal and she goes and buys a um, hundred food packs for the people in her community. Some of you might be familiar with that story. In that instance, it's a bad decision, but it's more a moral dilemma because when she took that, when, it, when, when the offer came, she did not take it for her selfish reasons. She took it and thought to herself, okay, this Christmas, there'll be 100 poor families that will have a package, you know, of food to be able to eat. The other side that's tugging her is like, this is the wrong person to be taking the food packages from. That's a moral dilemma. When you feel like, no, there's something that's not, that, that's not right here. And it is important that you're able to tell the difference between the two. Um, simple decision, do I take this salary? Do I take this job or not? That's clear cut decision. Um, you go and you negotiate for it, you have those skills. <clears throat> but when there's something that is countering the good that you think you're going to get, that's when we have um, a moral dilemma. So I think it's that, that's for me my starting point that ethics and values is not about just making any decision. It's about making those decisions that tug at you. Um, and, and, and it, like I said, it comes more when we are talking about leaders. So think about President Cyril Ramaphosa and the decisions he has had to make under the lockdown, where he says, let's send the kids back to school. His moral dilemma is that his youth, yeah, this country's lifeblood is about to be put at risk health-wise because he's going to send them um, to school. But the other, so, so the, the simple decision would be just don't send them back to school. But listen to you, you guys in your heart, I'm sure you're so frustrated with some of the things you've had to do, learning online or for those of you who have gone back, having to go back, you know, like in, in, in a staggered fashion. So he, leaders sit there having to do, having to make very critical decisions like that. And you know you're facing a moral dilemma when you feel that something um, is, um, is, is tugging at you. Your parents go through it. Think about your parents trying to figure out, so do we let, um, do we let um, the, her go back to school or, you know, or stay at home? But think about yourself as well. Um, sometimes you make friends and you're embarrassed to take this new friend. So you meet Gladys, you like Gladys, and you want to introduce her to your other friends, yeah? But then you decide, no, you know what? She doesn't speak the same language. She doesn't dress like them. She doesn't come from the same background. You're being torn here. You're being torn because you really like this person and you've created a bond with this person, um, which is friendship. And that is what you value. But on the other side, you also have allegiance um, to the others. So moral dilemmas, the point I'm making is that it's not only huge, big decisions, um, it also sneaks up on you. And you need to be conscious um, about it. You need, your mind needs to be open to say, wait a moment, I'm addressing a moral dilemma. The fact that I'm trying to malign a friend of mine and say, I, I like her, I would like to grow my relationship with her, but I'm not going to have that friendship with her because these other ones um, who are, whose friendship I also like, you know, they, they somehow don't fit together. That's where your value system gets torn apart and you have to make, um, you have to make some decisions. So I'd like to play a little game with you and I've asked Val to run a mini poll 
um, just for us to truly understand what it means to, 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 to be facing a moral dilemma. Um, Val, are we able to do it? Yeah, here we go. Okay, so this is, it's, it's only one question that I wanted to ask. Let's imagine you're invited to your best friend's um, 18th birthday party. She has been talking about it. You guys have been planning about it. Um, and the day arrives, you're dressed up, you go to her home, party is already underway. But then you discover that at the back of her house, her brother, her older brother, who she likes quite a lot, by the way, is dealing drugs, okay? And some of your friends, your more naive friends are actually being lured. They're actually being, you know, told, come, come and try something. So you see it, yeah? You, you, you now recognize that, wait a moment, this is something that's not right. Um, I want you to look at the three answers that I've put proposed to you, the three, um, the, the three options, like to use Gladys's language. What would you do? Would you be a loyal friend and stay at the party? Oh, nah, huh? yeah. Understanding that some of your friends are at risk of starting a drag habit, yeah. Option two, would you be responsible? You call it out. You say no to your friend and her mom. This is what's happening at the back of the house. What's the risk there? They won't like you after that. Um, the third one is you actually go a step further where you say, I'm going to be law abiding because I have a principle against drugs, you're gonna leave the party and you're actually going to report it to the police. So your, your, your best friend's 18th birthday party, unfortunately, is gonna be memorable for that. So basically you can easily become an outcast um, in your society. Can you click one answer? What would you go with? Which option would you go with? And don't worry, we, we, we don't know who is voting, um, but do click on it. Click and submit up. And Val, I don't know how many people we are, but maybe I'm when you get... We've got 100%. Okay, I'm going to end. Okay, already. Okay, perfect. So can you share the results? Yay. Okay, this is very interesting. Can everyone see the results? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. So in the, the, it seems that the majority um, would be responsible. They would call it out. They'd tell the friend and, and their mom about the, about the drugs. But then there are a couple of others who would... They just keep quiet and they'd let their friend have the 18th birthday that they wished for. And then there are others who would um, who would who would call who would call on the who would call on the police. Yeah. OK. Any thoughts on that? Is this a talkative group or is it a quiet group? Normally talkative. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Does anyone want to say anything? Any 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 take on why you voted the way you did? No judgment. Okay. Can so, I please uh, give my perspective? I'm okay, after her. Okay. I voted that um, I would tell the police, but then I'll do it anonymously so that my friends wouldn't have to know. Okay. But then but, um, I would have done the right thing. Okay. Can you so describe for me, before you, before you run away, Katlejo, can you describe for me what what is the things that were pulling you to the one side? What were you thinking about on one side? What were you thinking about on the other side? Okay, so on the one side, I was thinking my friends are going to do drugs, which is not a good okay. thing. They might be drug addicts. Yes. And then on the other side, I was thinking this is also illegal. So if I report anonymously, I can save my friends from doing the bad thing. And then they would still not see me as a bad person. Okay, but what about your friend? What is your, what is your friend going to think? Because you're going to leave the party, well, right? my friend at that uh -huh. <laughs> uh, my friend at that moment would probably hate me but in the long run she will thank me okay. that okay friend I get I see your point of view why you did it okay so you feel so, yeah. you feel that you you've actually mentioned three different directions in which you're being pulled right yeah okay Zichle, yes. Zichle? okay thank you so much Katlejo. so I had voted that I would also be law abiding uh -huh. Number one is because my friend, you know, guys, you love your friends and you try and do the best for them. That's the first that would be pulling me that I want to be a supportive friend, but not in bad instances, you know. We try to be nice and like, friend, it's not okay, but like, you shouldn't do it. But then on the other hand, you're like, this is very illegal, you know. Yeah. So I feel like rather lose one friend than lose a whole community to drugs, you understand. Mm -hmm. So me not being friends with that one person will, will pay back by saving the entire community because one way it's like, my one friend, if I keep quiet, I get to keep one friend and kill a whole community. 
And if I lose yeah. one friend, I can save other little boys and girls that come after us, you know? Yeah. Just putting yeah. it out there, like, in my community, something wrong is happening. So I would just be that bigger person to be like, I'll lose a friend, it's fine, but I'll make yeah. more in the future and save my community, keep it alive. Okay, love that. Thank you so much. Um, and we can go on and on and go on. And I, all of you will, will have slightly different explanations for this. The main um, thing I'm trying to um, emphasize over here is that there is no right or wrong answer. All of us, depending on how far you go, you will be able to ultimately justify whatever your response is, okay? So that's the other thing. Moral dilemmas and when you're making decisions are never comfortable. But as leaders, courageous leaders, um, you need to be able to step up um, and be willing um, to face it. So yeah, you know you might lose a friend, but at least you felt that you know you, you, you stood for something and that in the, at the end of the day, um, you shall be able to, to make a friend. And yeah, some people might keep the friend for whatever reasons um, there is. You, she, she, she might understand that this family is, is, is in like such a, 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 a tenuous situation. If anything happens to them, it explodes. Everyone will always have those reasons, but what's important is that you explore what are the options that I'm looking out over here and what are the potential outcomes um, that can come out of it? But don't and never shy away um, from running away um, from, a, from a moral dilemma. And so like, like we said, how, how do you know? And I think that's what I was trying to ask Atlejo. How, what exactly are, is, is, are the values that are at stake here? Um, and so I think that's what is also critical is that you need to be, a clear, you need to be clear about what your value system is all about. And, and, and now you see how all the G4G modules are linked together. Where did we talk about uh, value system and a courageous leadership, remember? We talked about know your mission and within there, I'm sure you were asked, who is your favorite leader and why do you like them? What is it you admire about them? That gave you an insight as to what your value system is. So um, you, you need, for, for you to be able to make good decisions um, that are ethically um, and value-based, you have to be clear about what your, your, your values are. Um, so for example, if I were to say to you guys in the chat box, what are your value, what, what's your value system? What are those red lines you will never cross? I'll ask you to put it in the chat this time. Sorry, my style tends to be very interactive. I love to hear voices. I like to have a bit of interaction. You will never lie. That is Val, and I know that Val. Huh? <laughs> when I want truth, I go to Val, and Val is like, nope, not yet there. Okay, anyone else? I will never kill, okay, true. Anyone else? Are we thinking? Respect comes first, okay? I will never deceive. Mm -hmm. Okay, that deceive is the lying, yeah? Anyone else? I will never betray. So you're a loyal person. I will never change who I am. I am authentic and I stand by who I am. I will never ruin my reputation. Reputation is precious. Um, I will never forget those who stood by me. That is loyalty, yeah? Fantastic. And I can see that they're continuing um, to come. So always be very clear about what it is. And your, your, your value system is important because it's what gives you the courage for you to be able to say, this is what I am going to do. So for example, um, I think it was Zintle who said, you know, what she did was illegal. Clearly Zintle prioritizes and, and figures out that, um, that, 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 that abiding, being a law abiding citizen is something that is important um, and dear to her. For me, I'll tell you mine. I always say to people, and I've always said it on every forum, I will never sleep with anyone for a job or for a tender. That one, <laughs> forget it. It will never happen. I would rather go hungry and skip meals, but I will never take that. And it's those, 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 those values that allow you to be very firm and very clear um, to the extent that people actually begin to respect you for what, um, for what you stand for. So understanding, knowing, and reflecting on what your value system um, is all about is very important. Um, write it down. I know Asnath always likes to say, have those reflections, carry a diary. Those are things to reflect about. Slowly over time, you're going to learn things, you know, that you stand up for. For example, for me, anyone that is maligned, um, I, I always stand up against a bully. I will always stand up if you're maligning someone because of their sexual orientation. I just don't like it when you put another human being down. But it's something 
something that I discovered later on in life when I entered into a fight and was protecting someone. Suddenly I realized like, oh my God, Rita, you actually like to protect um, other people. You will never stand by there. So learn yourself. You're very young, but use these opportunities, the things that happen in front of you. Always take a step back, reflect and say, what did I learn um, about myself um, today? Other critical lesson, it's never easy to stand by your values. And I'm going to tell you a little story of something that happened to us um, in a work setting. Um, and yes, it's about being a courageous leader of self, but it, it is when it's happening to you, it's sometimes standing for your values and your ethics um, is not easy. Uh, so to give you a bit of background in terms of what I do professionally, um, I do what they call programmatic audits. I specialize in monitoring and evaluation as in the public health space. What does that mean? It means that these huge multi-million dollar global health programs, there's always someone who has to keep an eye out that things are not going wrong. So I tend to work in various multifaceted teams. And I'm going to tell you a story about what happened to one of our teams. Um, we have finance people. So the finance people are the ones who say, okay, how much money is there? Was the money spent properly? Was it used to buy the drugs? Say, for example, the vaccines that are required for the children. Um, and then we work with what we call procurement and supply chain management people, um, the guys who make sure the procurement is right um, and that the right um, uh, drugs were bought and that it, it went to where it was supposed to go to, um, that the, the, the drugs were kept in the environment that they, that they needed to. My job comes at the end, whereby we say those drugs that were taken to that facility, were they actually given um, to the people that needed um, to get them, to, to, to get the drugs, right? Um, and then we validate the results. So when we work together, this is like, for example, if you're running an audit, you have your finance people, you have your procurement people, and you've got people like myself who are looking at the data. And we know how to work together to bring things um, together. It's a sensitive job because if we don't pass you, the monies can stop flowing. And we're talking about big monies, like one billion rand. Sometimes that's how much we have to, we have to approve. So in, in, in this particular instance, we were doing it in one of the countries that was receiving one of the largest amounts. I'm not going to mention the country and it is not in South Africa. We went for lunch as we typically used to do as, as team members and we came back and one of our team members and you could, you, you just, we just felt the temperature in the room changing because we always leave our laptops, we work as a group. When we need to look at files, we look at them. When we need to talk to people, we go off into a side room and we interview people, that type of thing, as we're building up the evidence. So this person comes back and finds a fat envelope, clearly filled with money, um, um, sealed up, and next to it was a bullet. Um, and you can see what the options are. Clearly this person had stumbled onto something um, that was not beneficiary to the, to the people that we were busy auditing. And it's as if there were only two options over here. One was take the money and go and be happy. The other one is, it's your life really, yeah? It's your life. Um, well, we were around the person and immediately, and, and this is why you're going to hear me talk about some of the things that help you when you need to make these tough decisions. One is your village. You guys have talked about village, but you have no idea how important it can be. So immediately, I don't know, we, 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 we immediately started having discussions. And the one thing that quickly came out is that there are not two options. And we started assessing what the options were. One is that, yeah, we can, by the way, we're all internationals. We could all pack our bags, go to the hotel, pick up the bags and fly out on the, the next flight. That is a coward's route out. And guess what? That person is going to win because whatever it is they're trying to hide will never come out. Uh, the option we finally landed on is that we actually packed our bags, but we went to the company that contracts us and sends us to the entity that we were auditing. Um, and we continued our audit um, from there. Were we scared? We were scared. And by the way, it's not only the person who's found the bullet and the money, um, because basically it was clearly a message to, to all of us. Um, but we felt that we needed this to come out and we figured we would get the security by staying um, at, at, at the other office. So it, 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 it can be daunting, it can be scary. And, and like we're saying, it's not just simple decisions of did I see a test paper and things like that. Sometimes it can be, um, about, it can be about your life. Um, but the trick is to then say to yourself, what are we really looking at um, over here? And you hear me use the word we, uh, because you pull your village in. Um, even the lady um, who found the exam paper today, what did she do? She went and told friend, 
Yeah, there's, there's, there's something that when you feel you're being tugged at, um, you always inevitably want to go straight back um, to someone who will help you think through it. Now, how do you pick the person who is going to help you think through it? You need to build your village, but it's not just about building a village. And I want to unpack this. When you say you have a village, you need to know what every person in that village is all about. And in your village, you need to know who is your moral compass. Yeah. So I, for instance, have friends whereby if I need to discuss like the most sensitive things, there are times when we really do land upon some very, very wrong things, like in the work that we do. There are some people I go and I bounce ideas off of, but I know it's because those people are the people who think like me, they prioritize like me, and they're my moral compass. They'll hold me um, to, to your values. So if you're writing down, I know you have your books. One of the things I want you to please reflect on um, tonight is who is your moral compass? In this village that you say that you have, who is, your, who is your moral compass? And if you are not clear about who that person is, to identify that person, think about, like I said, the person who, you know, if I go and I say this to Val, Ah, Val will be very disappointed in me. The way the young lady went and told Sharon and Sharon is like, ah, friend. Those are your moral compass and those are the people that you want to keep um, close to you, okay? So I'm about to start wrapping up, but I want to talk about, we've talked about what uh, um, a, make, a moral decision um, is all about. We've talked about the fact that um, leaders tend to face it. We've talked about the fact that you will always have options, but it is important you explore what the outcomes of each option are. Okay, and they must, you really try um, to align it to your values. We've also talked about the fact that it is never easy because sometimes it's scary, it's life threatening, but that's what courageous leaders do. You step up and then you go to your village for them to give you that moral support for you to be able to stand out. Risa, are you there? Your screen yes, I am. Is Can you hear me? Yeah, you just froze there for a second. It's okay, carry on. Okay, I can actually see that uh, my internet is unstable. Okay, so I, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, how, um, what are the things you could do to build your ethical, your ethical and values-based muscles, yeah? The first thing is cut out anyone that is morally corrupt. Um, and I just say that. I know it's ruthless, but you, you have to decide which path in life you're following. Um, if you're willing to start making compromises now in your young lives at this point in time, where are you going to be in 20 years time, hmm? in 30 years time? You're going to be the people where society is saying, but we saw that from the word go, she started compromising. So just make it your behavior. Just get rid of the people that are morally corrupt, okay? And, and, and morally corrupt, I'm basically saying the people whose values are not aligned with you. And it goes back to the concept of village. You know, who are the people you want in your village? Who you want around your village? There'll be some you try, you test, you're not aligned, you let it go. And it's okay to let them go because they don't fit within what your life's interests are. And then proactively surround yourself with the people um, that demonstrate the values, the people who will cheer you on. I, for instance, have a group of friends. We are called Click, and this name was given to us while we were at university, um, and it's because we were women of a certain of a certain profile, who were outspoken, were protective of each other. Um, in our days. Um, HIV was extremely rampant. There was no, <laughs> at that point in time, we didn't even know whether you got it by kissing, whether you got it by having sex. Um, we, were, we were our sister's keepers. We, 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 once we knew that this person has a nasty background, we would step in and we would surround our sisters. We were hard, we are hardworking, we're ambitious. Um, and when I think about the women who, you know, who formed that group, um, Alan, the one of the founders of G4G is part of it. We, we, we got branded that way. And in the beginning, I kept on thinking, what are they saying? Are we snobs? Are we, you know, being elitist? But I realized that no, it's because we were known for certain things until today, that is who we are. So today when people say to me, oh, you girls in the clique, 
I smile, I laugh and I embrace it because I think to myself, okay, at least that is what you know me for. So surround yourself with those types of people. And please don't forget that at Girls for Girls, you have so many people to choose from. You have from your mentors, you have your mentees. I hope you're going to join the alumni. You're going to meet other wonderful women from UJ and from uh, University of Pretoria, Athlon Girls. Um, you have a lot to choose from, but you have to be deliberate about it. You've got to say, this is who I want in my circle. Um, so that you, 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 you then have people who will push you in the, in the right direction. The other thing I would say to you is please grow your mind. Invest time reading. Um, if, if you admire someone's value-based systems, I'll give you an example. Yeah. I don't know how many of you have heard about um, Malala. I am Malala, and if you haven't, um, it's a book that's worth reading. Um, she's a young lady that got shot by the Taliban because she stood up for education. It's, it's worth reading, not just for the story, but it's worth reading to get into Malala's head and say, what really gave you the courage to stand up for what you really believe in? In other words, for you to understand how great leaders um, are able to make those tough decisions, yeah, and how they make ethical and value-based decisions um, at critical times, read about them. Read about the ones who make mistakes. I think there is a book called um, The Big Men of Africa. Um, it talks about people who did wrong things wrong. Idi Amin, um, Mobutu Seseko. I know you're young, but those are people who screwed up our continent. Um, and, and you need to understand, what is it they did wrong? And then you read books like this this that show you what is it um, that was done right um, so that you can make decisions for yourself. Uh, I'm sure you had the long discussion about values. Um, some people in the beginning tend to take values from their homes, their families, the people who are influential in your lives. But where you are right now as 18 year old women, um, you can vote, yeah? Um, it means you actually have to make up your mind. Some of us come from households whereby maybe you know, the value system is a little bit um, uh, compromised. Um, I, for instance, come from a colored family. My mom is, is, is what is called colored over here. I'm originally from Uganda. I, I didn't even know there was a classification for it, but I have um, cousins who they sneer at black people. And I'm like, but wait a moment, we are black. Um, so, and, and when you come from that, then I said to myself from a very young age, I was like, wait a moment, why are they seeing, why are they judging people on the basis um, of color? And I was thinking if they're saying that person is black and I look like what I look like, then what do they say about me? And I took a stance. Um, for me, racism and fighting it has been a big issue for me. Um, probably small wonder that I ended up marrying a South African man who, you know, was, 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 um, was in exile as well during apartheid. So allow yourself to explore um, and things and to have an independent mind around your values because even the people around you might have certain values that are wrong. I disagree with xenophobia. Some of you may be in your houses. You hear people saying, ah, but that one is a mukwere kwere, comes from such and such a place. Oh, that one is from Limpopo. They're human beings, yeah? And you need to have that courage to be able to say to yourself, I choose. This is what's important to me, to just see human beings and to love everyone. Um, and therefore, that means that you might even end up disagreeing with people um, that you love and that are, you know, historically um, um, dear to you. The other thing I would say is practice speaking up. Use your skills in the art of communication. Um, and, and, and use it to take up a course. In, in session five, when you did um, um, running for public office or, or, or leadership and service, like we like to rebrand it in South Africa, you know, pick, don't, don't just sit there and say, oh, I think that was bad. I think that was a, you know, that person, you know, that seems to not like gay people. Do something about it, you know? And look within yourself and pick that one cause. It will make you feel a more holistic, a more holistic person. So I'm challenging you um, not to just sit with all this information in your head, but to act on it like the leaders um, that we want you to be. And like Gladys said, um, ex practice exercising the options and the outcomes frameworks um, because it is important that you become ethical and value based right now, not later. Yeah, because if you cheat for your exams today. What if it's uncovered when you are applying for that master's scholarship or who betide you when you're running for presidency? It comes out then, you know? So you've benefited, you've sneaked through the exams, you even got the job. As they are pointing the CEO, they say, no, 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 no. In her final metric, 
she cheated in her paper. It destroys everything. So this is what we say, think about the long-term um, outcomes. And if that is always conscious in your head, um, you should be able to then uh, protect yourself. So I'm going to leave you with a final message. And it's not just about, I see Val's video is on, which means my time is up, yeah? <laughs> Okay, um, th it, this, this message that I'm giving you is not just about ethics and, and values in, in, in decision making. It's a message I'm giving you, I think, for all the skills, all the lessons that you have learned um, in G4G. And it's one of my favorite quotes. I've, I failed to find out who actually said it, but they say, sow a thought and you reap an action. You sow an action, you, reach, you reap a behavior. You reap a behavior, you reap a habit, and then you reap a destiny. What do I mean? It means that all the knowledge that you have picked up here at G4G, go back to your books here, um, take these ideas and put them into practice. So for example, start simple. If it's just the art of communication, you want to start speaking clearly and with uh, persuasion. Do that. Do, make it an action. You have an idea. You say to yourself, I'm going to become a powerful communicator. Take that first step. You have the skills. now. You've got the knowledge now, but you need to act on it. Yeah. So you, you, you go out and you start speaking clearly and you start speaking um, uh, persuasively. And you do that on a regular basis. That's what it means to turn it into a behavior that people begin to understand that when Val stands up to speak, when Gladys stands up to speak, they speak persuasively and they speak clearly. You turn it into a habit. A habit is something now that is ingrained. Um, they say it takes 21 days to build a muscle. And we like to believe that it also takes 21 days um, to build a skill. Um, so you, you turn it into something that is now instinctive um, uh, within you. And then ultimately, like I said, it becomes your destiny. Yeah, It means it becomes embodied within you. And when people are talking about you at a later point in time, then they're able to reflect on you and say, ah, what a powerful communicator but think about it if you did that for your ethics and values whereby you say to yourself from this day going forward I will always hold my value system center forward and every time I'm making critical decisions I will always draw on the framework that was taught to me by Girls for Girls and you turn that into a habit so that the day you're running for president you will be able to say that one impeccable with her word thank you very much thanks Amelia Rita, I turned on my video so that you would see me clapping. <laughs> That's why I turned on my video. <laughs> okay. No, thank you so much. <laughs> you know, we have our little code, yeah? It's like when you see the video, come on. Start wrapping up. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, good. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah. Thank you, Rita. Thank you. And I'm sure everybody took that in and listened and took the points out of. I actually wanted you to continue, but you know, <laughs> we have to go to all the as we have to go and um, actually unpack this. So, girls, when we go into the circles, um, I'd like you to reflect on what Rita has um, presented to us. We've, we haven't had, obviously, it's, um, she didn't structure it in a way that you would ask questions, but she did allow for you guys to engage and think about your values because it always go back to your values and that your values shouldn't be compromised, that you say that this is my non-negotiable. So I'm going to ask Val to please uh, take us to our group so that we can uh, further discuss this. No questions first. <laughs> oh, so we still have questions. <laughs> Sorry, I'm also help. rushing. <laughs> uh. Okay, um, questions. Anybody? Are they shy? Oh, write down the quote. Okay, I'll, I'll write it down for you and it will be shared. Um, so, so a thought, reap an action. So an action, reap a behavior. So a behavior, reap a habit. So a habit, reap a destiny. I'll send it out to you. Yeah. Because I've never seen you so quiet. Why are you so shy? <laughs> I've been raving to Rita about what amazing young girls you are. So I want to hear your voices. I have a question. <laughs> Great. Go ahead. Uh huh. So, ma'am, I wanted to ask that what principles do you use to determine that these are my 
no-go areas like i can't compromise on this one this one I can compromise on so like what do you use to determine that this one it's fine i can mm-hmm. you know rock the waters a little bit on this one the other one is like no no-go area i'm not gonna move it's it is what it is then how do you determine those factors when it comes to your morals and your you know eth- yeah. um, ethical beliefs okay so you remember i talked about the fact l- learn yourself huh? you guys are still young um you're going to have to go through it there are no shortcuts here you're going to have to learn things that make you mad yeah like for me i i, I really cannot stand anytime i see someone taking advantage of a person of a person's weakness or something like that that drives me mad i discovered that about myself yeah so that's why i said you're going to learn yourself then there are some things you will go through and you think to yourself that really doesn't bother me okay i'll give you an example well one of my nieces one of my favorite nieces she studies anthropology and she's always making a big cause about you know bones and 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 i get it it's important for us to know where we come from but truthfully it's not my issue okay um she talks about the fact that you know the artifacts she, she's a big negotiator for or rather lobbyist for artifacts from egypt from ethiopia being brought back to africa she will go to war she she goes for marches she says for me that's my principle that's my value we need to have these things back in africa rita it doesn't move me okay i understand the logic but it's not it's not something that's important to me i'm giving you an example how i pick and choose yeah so the the indicator to rita is when i get mad okay like when i see something and it riles me that's when i know that there's something here that 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 that, that i need to look out for the one about um sleeping with with the, with with people to get promoted and things like that i it 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 happened in front of me and and in a in a quick decision i decided i will never be that woman we were having an interview okay it's a long story but she was my boss we we, we went and had a discussion all males and i could see the tricks that she was playing so i had that opportunity to sit and watch her and i remember thinking in my head like yo no i would rather walk out of here with everyone against me but i never want to be that person yeah so that's why i said have these conversations with yourself and and when i say that you i'm not saying you're you're mad you're talking to yourself i really do i come back and i explore and i think why were you really angry oh it means that that's what's important to you and over time i'm 48 years old over time you 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 can clearly say what your value system is and what it isn't right now i'm sure there are three things that are important to you which you know you know you will not keep quiet about you write it down and over time and over the years you will see your value system emerge um and become um even clearer but um that's how i do it that's how i do it yeah thank you ma'am for answering my question thank you so much to rebecca i thought you had a question priska i think priska wants to ask a question Yes ma'am good afternoon i'd like to know how do you stand firm in your decision when no one is standing with you mm. yes that's the question mm. okay so that, that that is about um it is about the courage you have to say to yourself um you believe in that something um so for me i draw strength from looking into the future i think asnath touched on it i i i always and gladys did as well i always ask myself the people that admire me the people that look up to me you the the g4g girls if you were to see me behaving a certain way what would you think of me i value your opinion what would you think of me and that's what gives me the courage then i'm able to say not going to happen okay what if you were to catch me taking a bribe from a policeman and you know those shows whereby they sneak upon you and they say gotcha what if that is published you know <laughs> and they're the g4g mentors the g4g girls you know how will it go down i always try and think um of the long term consequences um and i think that's what gives me courage uh, but the other one is what uh, gladys said how do you sleep at night um so for instance me uh, sometimes we have to make decisions health decisions um whereby if i stop the money children will die like i work in countries where malaria is the number one killer children die even as we are talking about bringing the money in holding it for 5 days there are children dying every day it it sits on me so 
there are times when I work like 24 hours straight and I say to myself, I would rather that is not going to sit on me. So it's that question of how do you sleep at night? For me, I know that that's how I ask myself. And I just say to myself, when I put my head down at night, my conscience must be clear. And I found that when you do that, the more that you do that, the more that you have a clean mind, you find you will kind of like be propelled to behave more and more and more like that. I have not been in that murky area where you sink yourself, you know, into corruption and into, I, I, but I, I've, I've read about it. And it seems once you start, they tell you, once you take the first bribe, it's so easy to take the second, the third, from there, your life is about bribery. Okay. So it, it's not about being brave and bold and things like that. I pro, so it, it's like, I, I kind of like, I ask, I put my, I hold myself to task. That's what I do. It's a very good question. Um, I had never really unpacked it, but I think that's, that's the way I handle it. That's the way I handle it. Yeah. Thanks a million. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Um, ma'am, I have a good question. Go ahead, Tinsualo. Okay, um, ma'am, obviously you've encountered stuff where you were tempted, if I can say, tempted. Yes. So I wanted to know, when do you know like, when do you know, no, 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 now this is where I draw the line. Mm -hmm. When you can name it. You, you, um, who was it who I was doing the, the, the what, what, that answered um, earlier on? Um, and I said, describe it. Um, the beautiful young lady, Katleho. Katleho? Yeah, you remember when I said, what, what, what are the values at stake? So that is what I do, Tinsualo. I name it. What are the values that are at stake over here? I am being asked for a bribe. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You call it out. Hmm? I am being asked to do a sexual favor for you. Hell no. It's not going to happen. I'm being asked to cheat. Never. I'm being asked to discriminate. No. So name it. I think when you can, when you can name it, then it means you're calling yourself consciously and you're saying to yourself, Rita, you mean you're a person who bribes? Rita, you're a corrupt person. When you look at it that way, I think that's when, that's when you stop. Yeah. You're able to just halt yourself and, and call yourself to order. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ma'am, was there a time where you, like, you came across such a temptation and you nearly, like, you had yes. that? Is, that yeah. Let me, let me give you a almost, quick example because I know almost. I need to close to close it down. I um, actually was going to talk about it earlier on. So um, I was part of a UN family. My husband was a UN diplomat. So every three or four years, we always had to pack up and, and relocate across countries. The way as a mother, I hold my family together. There are certain things I do. One of them is we always go everywhere with our dogs because my daughter, her one sanity is that she... she animals are with her, they're her babies, so she calls them. And when we were leaving Namibia to go to Uganda, we were relocating. We always leave the animals and then we go ahead because you're in a hotel, you're waiting for your things to get shipped through. Then you have to find a house and then you move into the house. Anyway, long story short, I found the house. So we're ready for the dogs to come to us. Um, this, the, the dogs had been left behind in Namibia with um, friends of ours who had uh, rented the house that we had in, in Namibia. And when the dogs were being shipped to Uganda, we kept on asking, like, what, what are the rules? By the way, taking animals across borders is very complicated. What are the rules for Uganda? What, what vaccination, what immunization do they need? And these guys are like, ah, just whatever the standards are in Namibia, they, they'll, they'll work out. The dogs get onto a flight. They have to go to Johannesburg. And in Johannesburg, they're now being put on the flight to come to Uganda. Okay. So I've, we, and you spend a lot of money. The tests that you do for the dogs, the tickets for the dogs, it's ridiculous. Okay. So, but we do that for our daughter just for her to have that sanity. As the dogs were about to be boarded, bo boarded from Johannesburg, they said, no, uh, we have contacted the officials in Uganda and they've sent us three pages of what needs to happen um, to the dogs. So the person who is now calling me is a gentleman who had shipped the dogs out of Namibia. And he's like, Rita, the dogs are not going to make it to Uganda. My daughter is on, she's on speakerphone because we're all like waiting. We were tracking, how are the dogs coming? So we knew, okay, they left Vinduk. They're now in Johannesburg. We're waiting for them to come onto another, another flight. My husband is also here. And we're like, but you know, no one was ever giving us any information. 
So my husband quickly calls the person who is supposed to be the contact person about the dog's vaccines and things like that. And the man is like, yeah, I can make it happen. You know what that means. Yeah, like, no, no, let them come by. We just talk to me, talk to me nicely. So we've got the guy who is telling us, do the dogs go back to Namibia? Um, can they be boarded to Uganda? It's a lot of money that has been spent. My daughter is sitting there with tears in her eyes. Um, my husband is over here. But in our family, we do have that policy. Um, even he as a diplomat, he cannot be seen to bribe. But I tell you at that moment, I'm sitting there thinking the amount of money I have spent. I'm looking at my child who is crying and I'm thinking to myself, how much can this guy ask? Yeah. <laughs> my conscience is my husband. He's the one who was like, this is not, we're not having this conversation. So he, when the moment he called it out, he said it, he says, you're asking for a bribe. And the moment he said that, you know, cause all along I was thinking to myself, okay, how much more can it cost? But I was naming it wrong. What was being asked for here was a bribe. So the moment my husband said it, he says, I don't pay bribes. I was like, wait a moment. This is what we are actually talking about. And the decision was very clear. Looked at my daughter and we said to her, Keza Mama, it's not going to happen. And we lost those dogs. We just said to the gentleman who was keeping them in Namibia, because um, he had been looking after them and he just said, it won't happen again. We, 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 once they stay, they stay, we'll take the dogs. I said to them, keep the dogs. And we ended up having to get different dogs um, in Uganda. So that is, a, it, it, it comes, eh? it's sneaky. It comes so quickly. And you're thinking, oh, okay, let me spend a little bit more money. No you're being asked to compromise your values. So that's an example from my life. Yeah, it happens. So that again, village, you see, my husband is in my village. He's the one who said like, Rita, we don't bribe. And the moment he said it, I was like, whoa, wait a moment. Um, we actually don't do that. And so yes, despite I want the fact that I would love to remain a hero in my daughter's eyes, I had to make up for it later on. I let that go and we had to find other dogs. Yeah, so it comes, yeah, it comes. And it, like I said, it tugs at you. Yeah, cool. Okay, um, I'm going to mute. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, and thank you, Rita, again. Thanks thank for the amazing presentation uh, and um, giving us the takeaways in terms of ethics and values. And not just looking at them in terms of values, but the moral compass, the hard decisions. Mm -hmm. If I were to sleep at night, where do I go? What do I come back to? What is in my mind? And later mm -hmm. on in the future, Will I look at someone and say that, yes, you bribed me, or I bribed you, sorry, or yes, I slept with you, and now we're in the same position. How will they always look at me? Yeah. So yeah. with those takeaways, I'm going to ask Val to take us into the groups. Thanks Can again. I just, uh, a final thank you, and to say to the girls how proud we are of you. Um, you are a special cohort. Um, like I said, the fact that you're putting, you know, your super energy these last few days, thank you very much. And thank you to the mentors as well for making the time. Um, so this is not just from Rita. This is, I think, on behalf of the broad G4G. I hope we're going to meet you. I keep on saying I can't wait for lockdown to end and then we can have all the girls together. But um, you really mean a lot to us. And please do stay part of our village. We hope to see you at the alumni. Um, and God bless and Godspeed. Thank you so much for having me. Take care, everyone. Thank you.